Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the Sunday edition of The Breakfast Club. We are live here on Sunday, the 24th of March in the snowy Canada. It's a cool day here. More snow yet again. We've got some friends on board. Uh, Derek's with us this morning. Excellent. Welcome, Derek, Albert, and Paul from sunny Spain or Drizzly Spain. What's it like over there, Paul? It's actually been about 27 degrees. It was like 22 Ooh, degrees. Tonight. Lovely. It's minus but, 11 here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, All right. I can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> keep it for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we're live on YouTube as well. And uh, we've got Christian first through the door as well. Awesome. And uh, welcome, Derek and Albert. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Albert, how you doing? He's like, I'm not saying anything. I'm just sitting in here. David. Oh, David made it. That's good to hear. I'm glad you made it, David. And uh, proud of you, David. You're doing some awesome work out there, my friend. And he was catching some stellar reversals there last night. We were having a little chat about Bitcoin just before I was heading to bed and then I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about this trade that he took and you see Bitcoin's got these amazing reversals all the time. Uh, like this one here this morning, that just happened in the last, you know, hour. Where are we at now? To 11 o'clock. So from 10 o'clock, uh, there's this reversal right here above an old high. Here's the reversal body breaks down below this low right here or, of that fair value gap and then we return right into it level one level two and look at that level three with precision bing hits it and then you start aiming for first order here then you can you start aiming for pull your fib tool and start doing that well that's what we'll be talking about with uh fail safes as well today so what i wanted to kind of share with you guys and I, this is not an ict thing this is just something that uh, I've kind of come up with for how to protect the assets that you guys have when you're putting live money or even your demo money and you try to pretend like your demo money is your actual live money. Can, is the sound okay with this, by the way? Can you guys hear me? Joey, good morning. Lambo, we were talking about you last night, catching the, David caught this little rejection block last night just nailed it and it pulled right away from him and he he just got out of the perfect spot so i was quite quite happy for him uh, by the way yeah we can hear you fine uh, darren okay yeah. thanks thanks okay. all right so um the purpose of this kind of exercise today is to kind of show you guys a little bit about this fail safe idea and when we traditionally have a, a stop loss that we put into a market, okay, and we traditionally would say, okay, here's going to be my stop loss. I'm going to put this right here, and I'm going to make sure I kind of give this a specific color so you guys always know what I'm going to be using here. So stop loss, we'll put it in. I think this is red. This is red. Which is this one of these two are red, or is that orange and red? I'm going to go with something that looks very red to me, <laughs> and. Uh, We'll pretend that's my stop loss, okay? So stop loss. And then we're gonna have, oh, we're gonna have the line too, sorry. That looks orangey to me, okay. So your stop loss traditionally is here. So if it comes back against you, you tend to go, okay, I was wrong. It was gonna go back up and I was uh, master training. Welcome. Um, so yeah, it tends to trade back against you and you're, you're willing and prepared to take a full loss. Now, what, how you calculate that is based on 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever your risk tolerance is, tends to be where your stop loss is. I would like to share with you guys an opportunity to, as you start to look at the markets and as you start to read price action, and you start to see the absolute precision that in which you can follow each candle, this stop loss is gonna take on a new meaning for you. 
it will be my ultimate loss. It will be the, if the market suddenly rips against me, it's my um, catch all. If, I, if I'm wrong, it's not going to be now. It's not going to be uh, just some arbitrary thing you put above an old high just because you think that's what you're supposed to do. That's just a, a fail safe or I almost I am almost interchange fail safe with stop loss. But it's it's the actual loss that your maximum loss you're willing to take. OK. Which should be around one to two percent of your account. And again, how you trade that while you trade that is entirely up to you. I always say this is for demo purposes only. Uh, as you know, read the description in the video. Any risks, any uh, advice that you take or any not advice it's not med it's not medical Jeez, you can tell I'm paramedic it's not uh, financial advice I don't recommend that you actually apply this to the your live accounts until you're absolutely ready that it works for you till you find a way to hone the skill you got to tweak it so that it's for you it, it I'm going to show you multiple ways that you can run a, a fail safe here you might want to tweak it your own way so it's special just for your trading style but uh, I'm not telling you to copy me I'm not telling you you have to put live money on this any risks that you take any losses you take are yours and yours only I take zero responsibility for that so but that said let's make some demo dollars today uh, so here's your stop loss that's the ultimate loss or max loss that you want to take the fail safe is a point in which we have price where price is going to be we do not want it to come back past a certain point so we're going to use this as an example this swing high was taken by this wick we have a reversal pattern happening right here you see that we have a swing point and we have a reversal pattern that occurs above a swing point so we drop down here and when when we return back into it right here this is our entry so that's where our enter is going to be and we'll put a enter here so you see it as entry I'll just move the sticks around every time we do a new thing so that's going to be my entry now let me zoom in here so you guys can so that's right there is the the point so you've got one two three there's three different places that you can you can do an entry you can take it right at the low of the fair value gap so when we draw the fair value gap out you get an idea that this is the what i'm looking for in terms of these, these swing points and this is just a basic reversal setup and then i will show you how to use how do we do this how do we use this in a cam model how do i how do i use a fail safe independently from all these things that you're showing me all these different uh setups like reversal models and cam models and 2022 models if you understand price action and here's the key you really must understand <clears throat> price action as cleanly as you can and if you if it fails for you it's because you didn't read a, a little swing point that happened that you're really tight inside a consolidation and it swung on you and it took out a rejection block there'll be many reasons to look back and go oh I see why this failed it's not because the theory was wrong it's because you missed everything's con condensing and you're missing PD arrays above or below you or just behind you that uh, that will throw you off so anyway let's get back into this so stop losses up here that's the maximum loss I want to take my entry is right here now the fail safe is if I'm wrong if you look right here look at this candle right here you see that that creates another big fair value gap so we have a fair value gap here and we have a fair value gap here which is now an inversion because we've traded through it all the way through one side and as we come back into it it's an inversion it becomes a senior what I call a senior array so it becomes a stronger array like a breaker becomes is a strong array above it you'll see that this is a breaker 
right? Because it's the last up close candle before a run below a low, a low. And then it doesn't take out anything down here, but it takes these guns out. So that becomes a breaker. It's another senior race. So we have double senior race overlapping it themselves, right? So there's an area that we imagine that would provide a level of support at that level, right? And we have also a breaker right here. Last down close candle before run above, above an old high. We have a reversal pattern here. And if you look right here, what's, what's happening here and here, we have a reversal pattern happening in that direction. We also have one happening here. So we have a swing point here, fair value gap. We run above it, we trade back to it, and then we get long. <clears throat> here's where you really need to be at. it's almost like I'm jumping ahead of myself here I'm gonna I'm gonna add this is gonna be <clears throat> sorry this is gonna be the advanced stuff on how to read price action inside this range I can already see a bunch of things that can throw people off let's go back to the basics stop loss enter in right here what we want to do is we want to be able to see because we see this reversal pattern that's potentially happening here that I could be just returning uh, I could be now running above this coming back finding support and continuing up higher much like we're doing on this one here much like we're doing on this this one here we're going higher so this becomes an area of interest it's an either a support level for a short or it's going to be the new reversal pattern to go long so you say to yourself which one do I take you say to yourself Based on your bias, your higher time frame bias for the day, the week, the hour, the 15 minute, five minute, whatever you're looking for, you're looking for a reversal at that specific point. We have two senior arrays piled on top of each other. As price runs into that, those three entry points, you can put 33, 33, 33% 33 of 1%. So if you had to put one full lot, you put a 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and a 0.4 in there to give you your full 1% uh, uh, up there, whatever they are. Divide them up in there so that they, they give you a maximum of 1% or 2% above the, the market. Now, the objective is that you never get your 1% ever should ever get taken. There are, again, some situations where price will just rip right up through you and take your stop, but that's why we risk 1%. That's the maximum. Now, the fail-safe is right here. It's a point... Let me zoom in a bit more here. I don't know if I got this. <laughs> Sorry, there's other people can know how to zoom in on this way better than me. Um, this point right here, when price trades above this. So let's say this candle just kept going doot, 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 and it marched all the way up into here. Okay, so we'll put a little. like this it just kept marching up 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 and we'll say we'll turn that into a nice bright color so that you can see what I mean I'll make it nice and yellow oh sorry background yellow is the whole thing damn thing yellow am I doing that right you guys are going to be like oh man I don't know how the hell to get that thing all. I'll wait because I've probably got. Background. Bright yellow. <laughs> Someone's probably like, oh, for God's sake, you're killing me, man. Just make it whatever it you can. The, there may be the opacity down at the very bottom. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Make it higher. It'll be a little more bold for you. Opacity. Down at the very bottom. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, once you click in background, there you, there yes. You go. There we go. Thanks. I got it now. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that Derek? Is that my buddy That's Derek? Right. He's always got my back. Thanks, man. Um, so let's say this thing continues going up. And it marches on up and it marches past your entrance. The first thing you should be thinking about to yourself is if price closes above this level and my stop loss is sitting up here and it's 1%. If it closes above that level right there, now what level you want 
to allow that. So I'll give you some advanced things to kind of think about that will make you, you have, it forces you to have to make this your own. And you're not just going to copy me. You're going to find something that your risk tolerance says, I'm prepared to go to this next level because of logic. It has to be logic, not gambling. If you find yourself saying, ah, I want to let it play a little bit more, let it play a little bit more, that's gambling. Oh, I don't want to lose this trade. I really want it to go. That's gambling. That is not a logic. And I want you to follow logical um, levels that say, if it moves past this, I'm definitely out. That This is your whole, this is all you right here. This is your personality. This is how you're going to finesse this piece right here. I'm just going to give you some pointers. So we're looking at this. This is a, a senior array, correct? That's a breaker. And we have an inversion. So they're senior arrays. If we start to lose senior arrays to the upside, that gives me a hint that I'm going, we're, we're losing two senior powerful pieces, chess pieces here, that I'm playing a chess game with my with my little chips. They all look the same, but they all have a specific power or strength. And when I lose two major chess pieces off on the board right away, because this candle's just ripped through them, I go, I'm on the wrong side of this. That's good. It's okay to be on the wrong side because the fail safe is here to help you. So here's my entrance, right? As it trades through this and it now closes above my entrance, you go now you have a decision to make. This here, the length of this candle becomes your um, fail safe zone, okay? It's a fail safe zone. So one, you could close at the high. So you could say, let's just, I'm going to make little notes in here so you guys can see this. And we'll make them, <laughs> you're like, oh, you and your damn colors. And we're going to use this, and we're going to use full opacity so that it looks like a real, because I only need to be told something a dozen times before it settles in for me. And we'll make sure it's nice and bold so you can all see it. And it's bold. And it's beautiful. There we go. All right. So the first thing is, so one, you can uh, close your trade at the close of the candle that breaks the high of the fair value gap. I'm, like, I'm making notes. Oh, you guys have to do a screen capture this. Isn't this awesome? So you can close your trade right there. As soon as it goes up there and closes, you can say, well, that's, that's above, I'm out. Uh, two is I can wait so two would be I will wait two is wait for a retrace back into the entry okay that's number two so what you're looking for now is the next candle that as soon as that closes and the next candle that forms it will, as soon as it retraces back into this, you close that out right at your entrance. So you are at zero or break even, or as close to that as you can be. Now I'm gonna show you several ways you can do this. One, you gotta be a little steely eyed person completely staring at the charts. And as soon as that candle starts to move down, now it's like, how fast can you be? So you're either gonna click on it right there and then it starts to move away from you or it goes boop, boop, back, burp, burp, and it bounces back and forth. And one of those is your exit. And then all of a sudden it comes down, you know, oh, well, that's the, that's the game I play. Okay. You're literally playing a game between, is it going to bounce around and pop back up above me? And if it, for me, if I watch this open here or close right there and this one opens and starts to close back down, I will wait. If it comes back and taps that again, I'm out because I won't give it a chance to run back above me. That's my out. 
if it keeps tapping down and then goes burp, 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 and then bounces around in between here, that's my out. Bounce, 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 bounce out. And as it starts to get back down, so I set that as an out. So I eliminate that hole I have to play with, with guessing whether or not it's going to come back. Now, as we know, when we look at these inversions, in order for price to continue on, it tends to come back to the inversion and then leave, right? So at some point, we're expecting it to come back, tap that inversion for strength and or rebalance a, a range or a little previous candles high. It's going to come back, tap that and then go, whether it's inside that inversion or not, whether it's just it's it's bullish for sure. It's going to come back to that. So we know it's going to come back there eventually. Now, whether or not it comes back there before you hit that. So another strategy could be, I don't care. My stop loss is here. I'm going to wait. And if it comes all the way up here, I'm still going to wait. If it comes back and taps me, then I'll get out. Those are the people that are like, I don't care. I'm going to risk 1% and I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not worrying about chasing my losses. That's what I'm willing to take. That's what I'm willing to take. That's cool. As soon as it comes back to here, you can break out break even so I like to see here and I say as soon as it closes there you can either get out right there the very next candle that opens this one here if it opened right there and just started trading right back down I would you could do this take your stop loss now and instantly move it to here so you're not trying to chase the price you're just saying if it comes back and rips through me then I hit my button I'm going to take a loss here but if I put my stop loss there it's an automatic it it's as fast as the computer is. My finger may may miss this. It may just quickly snap up, and you've seen that happen many times. It'll snap through your, your thing, and then you're like, oh, you hit your button, and it's like way too late, right? That little jab up was enough to clean out a big chunk, whereas if it runs back through here, your stop loss is there to protect you. So I like to drag my stop loss in here and say, now I'm boxing in price action. I want it to come back to my entrance for me to break even so i will literally you can take your take profit that you had down here and you can move you can do this as well there's another way you can manage it just say so it takes that whole idea of trying to have your finger hovering over that uh that button that says you know i've got to get i've got to get out of this trade i think this is green let's say this is your take profit down here and you're not on the wrong side of it here. As soon as that opens and starts to trade back down, bring your stop loss right there to break even or your stop loss is even tighter now. I'm trying to get back to here. So in order to catch this one at the right time, I take my, my take profit and I do this. Move my take profit right to there. So as soon as it comes back, it goes, doop, touches me. I now don't have to worry about, oh, oh here trying to catch that damn thing by snapping my finger on the thing when it's doing this bouncing up and down you're like oh i missed it oh i could have got out <clears throat> right there this is a quick way to get the computer to do it for you does that make sense do you guys get that yes no you guys are allowed to speak in here you know <laughs> that's the point of the skype thing just give me some verbal feedback do you understand does that make is that clear yeah, yeah, total sense. That. Yeah, that's great. Okay, good. So that's a quick, easy way for you to manage that if it comes back here, just move your, your take profit right into that spot. Move your stop loss to right there. So whatever it does inside here, if it suddenly rips off on you, you're, you're safe. It's not going to hit your stop loss here anymore. It's only going to hit your protection because you know, you know that anything above that it's going to keep going higher and we could see candles going up and then eventually coming back and tapping these inversions. So we're just hoping that it comes back, clips the inversion one more time, gives us a chance to go out, break even. You are now break even. Your fail safe has worked. So there's two different ways that you can do that right there on the close to wait for the retracement. And here's how you can protect yourself in terms of the retracement. Just pull your, you say, okay, I do not want it to go any higher than that spot there and here's confirmation you guys this isn't just some random thing that you're saying well i don't want it to go any higher than that because here's how you finesse it okay you got you got to really understand your price action now you say what spot 
did that stop on right there if I go back that says that is a key level not only is it a senior array it's my line in the sand remember we have the low the open and the mean threshold those are the three arrays inside each candle that I look at so you'll see me say I like the midpoint of that candle the mean threshold of this candle right here okay or I like the high or I like the open those are the three key levels I look for only and the only time I use the wick is when it's on a rejection block and I'll split it into quarters and I usually use those on a higher time frame but it's got three specific PD arrays you're always looking for. And the line in the sand is always the mean threshold. If you trade above the mean threshold or below the mean threshold, I should say if we're coming down, if we trade through that, we're going down further. See, there's the mean threshold of, a, of an order block. You trade right through it. You, you take out the full lows. So you're definitely <laughs> going lower. Usually you might see it just stop right there, just below that mean threshold come back in and then finally roll over and go back down so for me that's the line in the sand so that line in the sand is not just because the candle stopped there which it should as soon as I see that and it start and I, and I go I'm on the wrong side of this I'm gonna quickly drop my stop loss right into here and one of two decisions you can make you can either say this is my new stop loss that I'm willing to tolerate and I'm going to let this thing go all the way back down again. Or I only take trades that are perfect entries, wicks I don't care about, bodies that close there. Otherwise, I'm staying in. If I get even the slightest little body above that, I'm out. Your decision, your way of playing it. Again, you will find, once you practice this enough times, and you will see it on your demo account. Now, it's, you can't see it on a back test. You might see it on a couple of candles, but you have to be you you don't see on a back test what's bouncing up and down here, what would have taken you out, what wouldn't have what would have triggered you to to say, yeah, I would have taken it now. No, I wouldn't have, so on and so forth. You won't see that in a back test. You have to watch it live and you have to practice this live for it to work. So first close, again, it lines up with a mean with the mean threshold of the breaker, which is to me my line in the sand. I do not want it to go any higher than that. That's probably the slack that I'll give it. Now there's some slack you can give your uh, fail safe. You can say, I'm a rigid and I, I, would, I would suggest you be very rigid with your fail safe initially because you'll catch these kind of runs beautifully with zero drawdown or vir virtually no drawdown. That's the risk and the drawdown was literally that little pop up you saw right there, then it reversed and came back down again. And as soon as it breaks through one of your PD arrays that you're looking at in terms of the range that you're in, slam it right to break even or into profit. Turn it into a zero stress trade. Take the psychology of the painfulness of trading out of the way as soon as you can. And you only take it out when it passes that logical level of uh, price action moving to a discount array slam it to break even and now now if it trades back against you, you say I'll wait for another setup this happens all the time we're just finding some random spot this morning and we can see it happening it happens all the time and you're in a one minute chart don't get upset that you missed a, a trade another one's coming just give it another half an hour an hour and you'll be ready to do the same thing over and over again as you can see and David's done this like multiple times he showed you lots of examples last night I posted like three different examples I traded it one direction back the other direction a little while later came back couldn't sleep so I came back saw another one took it and uh, there's plenty of them don't ever get upset that you missed it uh, so once that you've got this fail safe in place now I'm gonna show you how we can make this thing a trailing stop loss it's a little bit different because a trailing stop loss is a fixed place that has a fixed set of pips that you will always be trailing behind your trade so in other words if you've got a 10 pip stop loss and you go down 20 pips it pulls you down 10 then all of a sudden you get a 20 pip wick go back up it takes you out and then continues down and you go ugh. trailing stop loss okay for the beginner to protect your stuff but not for the experienced trader 
here's how you can take your fail safe now and you can turn this into a trailing stop loss so when we know for example let's say this trade we got into this trade so now we've got our failing our trailing stop loss is going to be uh we're in this trade right here okay our take profit we're going to put down here at the rejection block some people put the old lows but you can put the rejection block there is everybody clear about how this fail safe works do they want that a little bit clearer do you want um is it clear enough for you guys on YouTube? Do you understand how that works? Joey, good morning. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that's fine by me. Okay, thank you, yeah. Paul. Shift below the order block takes out the high. It's such a powerful concept. Beautiful stuff. You could you use the path tool. That's a really good tip, Darren. We'll try that tomorrow, Hans. Okay. Um now when, let's say you're in this trade now i want to show you guys how you can manage your trade you take your fib tool you pull it from top to bottom because i am starting a new range now you don't pull it from this old one you pull it from the new one there's two things you have to keep in mind one you have to say where am i aiming for don't just say i'm aiming for the old low that's great that's great but you got to think what range am I in that I just created here? What PD arrays are in this range? So make a note about that. <clears throat> so what, what range am I in? So ask yourself these questions. One, what range am I in? Ah, ah sorry. I used to be a 50 word a minute typer. What range am I in? That's a question you want to ask yourself. <clears throat> Two. Um, what PD arrays are below me? <coughs> so, Paul, you're going to have to hit your mic button. I can hear you. Hacking and coughing like crazy there. Uh, so what range am I in? This range right here. Pull your fib tool and say to yourself, there's two ways you can trade this. I'm gonna first one I'm gonna show you is by with the fib tool. So what range am I in? We're gonna move this off to the side for a second. Sorry, I'm jumping around here. My mind is just racing through a hundred things I want to tell you. So first of all, we're going to trade the FIB tool. It's the easiest way to do this, okay? Easiest way to, to trade that new range that you're in. You pull your FIB tool. you got your entry. As soon as it breaks below that, uh, you got another little swing point right here. As soon as it breaks below that, I move it right into break even. So I move this into here. As soon as that one breaks that low right there. And then I go, as soon as it hits the 50% mark, I will scale out. A portion of my trade right here there's 50 percent so you pull your fib tool there you pull out you scale out 50 percent of your trade right there then you scale out another 10 percent here so if i've got usually i'll do five lots so i'll take out um two there three there four there five there if you've got 10 lots on you do two three four five six and then seven down here eight would be at the bottom and then leave 20 percent on for the run now what you do is when you hit 50 percent. so let's say this one happens right here so i'll show you what where this would actually so you got in your trade right here that's your entry you got your fail safe moving or you got your fail safe there you move your first take profit so you move to break you can move to, from there to break even after you hit 50 percent if you want i like to just move it into zero stress as soon as i can as soon as they hit 50 percent, you take a big chunk whatever chunk you want to take off at the 50 percent mark one you move it to break even two you move you now go down into your 62 take your stop loss slam it right up to 50 percent right there so as you can see, 
we hit it right here and we don't come back and get you it hasn't quite hit it yet hits it right here doesn't come back and get you then we go to the next take profit right here at 70 percent then you make your stop loss you move it to 62 percent you go great didn't come back and take me out then it runs straight down into 70 78 all in one candle boom 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 they all ran all the way down right and you're trailing your stop loss behind it okay another thing you can do is as if you want to scale out each portion the best way to do that is to say, let's say i've got five handles up here and I, I want to take one handle off there so i'm selling short here you go into your buy right here oops or you go into a buy Ooh, I'm, I'm actually buying something there shouldn't be doing that crap i don't know what i'm buying right now stand by did i buy something oh no i sold right away so you put your your order in over here you put a buy order in at one at 50 percent put another buy order in here at another one buy at 62 put another buy here another buy here another buy here you'll see that on one of the demos or the diagrams i put on the telegram channel last night you'll see that i had all my trades in and then i just put in all the buys which is just a quicker way for me to get out because it snaps into it and bounces out and i go oh i missed it i didn't have that damn finger on that button again right i eliminate that by letting the computer do it for me with the precision and speed that the computer is if it snaps through there it'll grab me quick provided the the spread doesn't open up enough and not allow me to get in but if it did i wouldn't have been able to catch it with my finger anyway so i always have my buy stops in here now so buy 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 and then i have it all the way down to leaving 10 percent on at the end and if it continues on that then i will just trail my stop loss so that's a quick way to make some money inside here using your trailing stop loss or your stop loss yeah your tra you'll trail the stop loss behind each subsequent fib level to make sure and if you're just watching this starting to rock it down you just take your fib tool and drag 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 and you're not even you don't even want to take out your take profits you're just going to say as soon as it hits that next level i'm going to be above it i've got let's say i've got four lots left on i'm not going to take anything off i'm just going to manage it like this if it comes back against me i'll take four there oh i'll take four there i'll take four there if it runs all the way through here i'll take four there then open ga gaps down here you sweet as soon as it rips through the bottom you go as soon as it hits the bottom there you go wham i'm going right up against break even now or right up against the the rejection block oh it went through i'm going to put it right at the here then all of a sudden it comes finally opens up comes back and taps you so as soon as that close happens you go great now i'm going to put my stop loss right up against there comes back taps you you're out so you're, you're literally following this thing down with your stop loss and on each fib level and you could keep your maximum profit on if you want you can just say i'm leaving my i'm not taking and i'm not buying any of these so that's strategy there's another strategy for you one is i'm not buying any one of these levels i'm just going to trail my stop loss down at maximum profit so if i've got five lots on here i'm going five lots as soon as it breaks that i'm going to move five lots right to there then five lots to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. And then if it hits the bottom, I'll move it right to there. If it continues through, I'll, I'll go to from rejection to the bottom. And if it closes there, then I will slam it right up against the, the close. If it, if it gaps down, that's great. Comes back, taps me, I'm out. You literally have caught that all the way down with five handles. And you were just trailing your stop loss at logical levels that you were willing to say, well, if it comes back, I'm good. That's the fib tool way okay that's a fib tool way here's another way and you've got to understand you got to have a little bit more um precision in your your price analysis so in other words you have to know now we go into this first thing i was trying to describe here first thing you want to say is what range am i in the second thing you want to say to yourself is what PDRAs are below me? You take your 
fib tool and you say 50 percent i have a consolidation right here so that would be our um we'll say it's a one minute that's just a fair value gap. So we have this one below us. We have one above us. That's in a premium array. I can see that. I can see this premium array up here. And I can see a discount array down here. So if I'm just looking for the PD array way to manage this, I'm going to say, what range am I in? What fair value gaps? What order blocks? What inversions are above me? So if I'm in this trade and I'm going to say, what's a discount array? Well, you you can pull your FIB tool and find your equilibrium point, which would probably be in here somewhere. So you'll know that price, if it wants to move from an area of premium to discount, offer price from a premium and a discount, you want to look at what range, what down here is in a discount array. Well, I've got old highs right here. I've got this fair value gap from this point down becomes a discount array i have this propulsion candle as a discount array i have this fair value gap as a discount array and i have this mitigation block down here as a discount array i know mitigation is not a senior candle i do have a breaker here last down close candle swing before taking out this high so this is sitting right at the 50 percent. so this could be just a level of support and then take off and come back so I want to make sure I pay myself when I get down here I'm gonna make sure my stop loss is into break even so when you quickly analyze this you got one two three four about four or five minutes to quickly analyze what you're looking at here and you're saying that array so here's where your your analysis you you start talking yourself out of a trade you go oh that's a senior candle array right near just below discount we've got equal relative equal highs up here with a high resistance liquidity run or a low resistance liquidity run above us above us i've got a breaker that provides support now i'm going if i'm inside this range i like to go breaker to breaker trading and i don't have a breaker down here so i got a mitigation block so hopefully that's going to give way on us i'm looking at that range and i've got to get to a discount so there's my 50 percent. if i can get into here i'm going to start paying myself inside this order block i know i've got the high the the, the breaker i should say the high, the open, and the mean threshold. I want to make sure I pay myself there. See how it reacts off of that? And then starts popping back up, and then it sits on it, and then finally breaks through it right there. You go, okay, good. So if it if I've moved my stop loss into break even, how it acts on this is going to be important to you now. You're going to see it sit on it, and the fact that it's not snapping off of it starts making me go, ah, it's that area there. It's like glue. It's come down, and it's stuck to it. And it's going to start to chew a hole through it now. Pop back up. Boom. And then it wants to drive through it. You want to see it hit an array and then snap off of it real quick. Snap off of it really quick. If it does, then it tells you that it's, it just came back into a discount and it's got intentions of going higher. So it sat there. Finally pops through it. And right there, as it pops through it, that's your line in the sand. You're starting to think like, I need to trail my failsafe behind me now. So my failsafe is one of those points where you say, if I break this mean threshold here, I want my stop loss sitting just above it. Because if this, if I break through it and it comes back into it, I want that to be my level of support. If I get above it again, then I'm on the wrong side of this. And chances are this fair value gap, if I break this low here and it comes back up, it's now the inversion on the other side. So you're constantly looking for these lows to get broken and these fair value gaps to form like this, you start to get nervous now, okay? Now you start to trail your stop loss and you say, I do not want it to break this point here. Then also you go, I do not want it to break this point here. So the moment that mean threshold comes into play, you treat it like this entry right here. If I trade above it like we did here if we trade above it it becomes the new fail safe that point there is like this point right here this is a point of go no go zone right when you have a 
point where you say, I do not want it to pass through the mean threshold of a candle. If it does, then I'm either going to continue on coming down, which is what I want to see. If it doesn't and it pops back up, then I have to say to myself, I don't want to see it break this fair value gaps high. If it breaks the high and comes back to it, it's this fail safe has now been moved to here. Now it tells me I've got a run back up to the upside because now I've got this broken. Okay, so if you break the fair value gap to the upside, it becomes inversion. We know that inversions are super supportive. Once you get them and they come back inside them, we provide a level of support and we leave them. So any fail, fair value gap that gets turned into an inversion to the opposite direction is your fail safe. Your fail safe is constantly moving to the next fair value gap. You say, I do not want to see that broken. I don't want to see that one broken. I don't want to see this one broken. And I don't want to see this one broken. If it's broken to the upside, I'm out. If it breaks to the upside, I'm out. So right here is an example. We swung below a low. We look at this here and you go, great. Now, if that breaks to the upside, I'll catch another run all the way back up again. It doesn't. It continues to roll down. No body breaks this. No body breaks this. And no body breaks this. So we're continuing down. Our fail safe is following us as we go down. Then the moment it does this, you see this gap right here and we trade above it right there. We trade above it. That's your new fail safe. Your stop loss is sitting right here and you say, here's my new fail safe. That was my new fail safe. But as soon as this happened below a low, I got to look at this as the potential for this to start running back up again. So we gapped up right there. You say, I have to make a decision. I have to do one, close my trade on the close of that candle right there. Two, wait for it to retrace back into here and I will get out with maximum profits. Or I just go, um, yeah, it's just those two. You're either going to wait for it to get out there or you just, as soon as it closes through that level right there, that's your, that's your stop loss. You're just saying as soon as it closes through that, I'm out. But it may just come up, wick up, touch it come back down it may just wick through it come back down so I like the close myself I don't like the wick so the body's closed above it now you've that whole downward trend is out right there yes it does continue down but then it comes back up again right so you you would you would have squeezed a couple of more bits of your juice out of your lemon there but that's my fail safe right there on a trailing my trade down a little more complicated than just a simple little um, fib tool that you pull inside a range but you really have to understand your PD arrays and when they give way how you trail that fail, fail safe behind you is important because each one of those are the reasons especially when you take out a low they become super important because they become the reversals right there's th there's the next one down here one right here this one becomes the reversal so when I see it trade above it right there I go, sweet. Now I'm thinking long. I'm thinking long. So as I put my stop law or my entry right here. If you want to do the Derek discount rule and you say, I want to get the maximum profits. I want this one or this one down here. Your choice. I like to, to trade this, this here. If I do see a fair value gap down there, especially at a time of day, like 10 o'clock, this is a beautiful place to catch your silver bullet entry for a time of day because all the stuff that I'm telling you here now you add this to time and price time of day oh man it becomes lethal lethal accurate so here's the swing point we have a body trade above it right here boof you go great now you start slamming your entries in you put one here one here one here maybe one down there stop losses sit down here you're risking maximum of one percent with four trades or whatever you know you want to get in on this i'm either going to catch it early or i'm going to catch it here here i want in on this trade especially if this is happening and a time of day on a daily bias for a long you're in a daily bias and this is a tuesday on a low in new york catching the ideal time, price, and precision on the um, one minute candle to go long. And once you catch this right on that swing, it's just taken out yesterday's low. Tuesday makes a new low right in London at 
uh, or New York right at this time. We see this setup happening. You're going, I don't want to miss this run. If this just comes back and taps this and takes off and leaves that open as a breakaway gap, I missed it. I'm taking one there. I'm taking one here, 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 here. I'm loading it. I'm loading up the bus. I'm giving this maximum opportunity. And again, they all add up to one or two percent of my account. OK, so then you see it come back down inside it right here. Bang. First entry, second entry, third entry comes all the way down. Fourth, fifth, sixth right to you. Stop loss is sitting here and it starts to run. Now you pull your fib tool from here to here and start trading your fib tool back. Oh, look at you, delicious bunch. Look, this this thing just happened here while we were yakking this morning. Here's one right here. Break below it, come back inside it, pull your fib tool now from down here to up there. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Pull your fib tool from now those of you who are, are on you have a live account check your live account and see if the same stuff is happening on your live account then you'll eliminate the whole idea about why do I not trade this live or why do I uh, yeah, this is all fine demo balling this, Darren. But if you don't see this on your live account happening right now, then I'm wasting your time. I'm demo balling this and you're not going to get anything from it. But if your live account is showing you the exact same setup, whether I take it or not is irrelevant. If you can't see it and you don't want to trade it, it's not whether or not I take it or show you my checkbook that validates it for you. You should see that and say, I'm all over this. If he ain't trading it, I'll take it. I'll take the money out of the to the bank. I don't care. There's your setup right there. We break below. We come back up inside it. One, two, three. You didn't get the third one, but you got the middle one and you got the bottom one. So you're in. Your stop loss was up here. Okay, so our stop loss was sitting right here. Our entries were right there. And there so we'll say we want to take the one now you may do this this is what this is where you're gonna get frustrated this is my entry right there because in order for the fail safe to work perfectly and your break even to be zero stress and zero losses you have to get the Derek discount this is the Derek entry point we're gonna name this the Derek entry point buddy <clears throat> that gets a special name now this is the DC entry point, okay? So you have, that is the maximum amount of premium that you could get to go short. So you look at this right here and you say, I want it, I want that there, and you don't get it. You literally watch that run away and you go, I don't get it. Because if it does trade above you with a body candle comes back and taps you, you'll be break even there. If you entered in here and that was your, exit point that's your stop loss you're going to take a loss so you notice that as soon as you enter in on the bottom half of that fair value gap you're committing to taking a loss if you're wrong if you're saying no way man i never want to take a loss or if i do it is the absolute minimum that i will endure i'll either take a full loss or i will take something that enables me to get out of my trade because i'm on the wrong side of it right there so you wouldn't have got the dc entry there you would have got your first one here and your second one there if you've got three entries in or if you're just waiting for that one entry you didn't get it so those are the unfortunate times where it doesn't come all the way back and fill you in and with the spread with your brokers sometimes you'll see the candle come your wick come right up into it maybe even pop through it and then come all the way back down and you never got into the trade because your broker spread was so wide that the bottom half of it never the bid side never took you in okay so that's the frustrating thing about it about having some of these brokers especially mt4 mt5 those jerks will take a run on your account you see their their the things are doing this all the time their spreads are opening and closing they're just looking to grab your money so i love trading view it seems to be pretty consistent and very seldom do you get above 0.75 on a spread 
like their their spreads are pretty solid that's what i love about them so you can catch these entries without having to worry about having your stop loss here plus whatever gory spread your broker wants to put above it you may come up there just before it but your spread takes you out even higher they're frustrating frustrating that's why i hate mt4 mt5 now I, up until november that's all i traded so seven years of trading michael stuff was on mt4 mt5 i didn't get into trading view until november so um hey yeah this is Derek. yeah so yeah what i would typically do there what i typically do is, is i think a combination of what what you were talking about so i would draw a fib from that high yeah right there yeah down to that uh 10 it looks to me on my chart like a 1028 this one no no the 1028 candle you had it there oh right here blue candle down yeah so yeah and then i would go above the the 50 above equilibrium and look for the closest pda uh so, on, on this so, side here you mean yeah, if I was going to sell this, I'd be above the 50, above the equilibrium. So, yep. yeah, I mean, I end up in the same place, but I'm just right. explaining. So, and the and the PDA that I see above, that, that to me is the premium PDA. Yeah. I'm going to grab that. Now, it could be the order block. Yeah. It could be the candle that's the order block. It could be a fair value gap because there's one of those there, too. Yeah. I mean, it, it's in there somewhere. It's right. typically where I would buy it. So that's what makes me comfortable because I'm in a premium, I'm selling. Absolutely. And that's an excellent, yeah. excellent philosophy to have, right? Um, if you're holding out for the absolute premium premium piece right here, or you might say, no, you know what? I'm still looking at this breaker right here or this order block. It's not a breaker, it's an order block. I'm looking for this and I like that imbalance. Michael would say, ooh, I'd wait for that imbalance. I catch that one on the way down because those imbalances are awesome places to catch shorts on but it violates our little reversal rule, right? So if you're waiting for that, you wouldn't have got it. But I like what he's saying here is he's pulling this range and he's saying anything above 50%, I'm hunting for PDA, PDA arrays that support a discount. Cause now I know I've got, I'm in the premium zone, I'm hunting. I'm taking a, an inversion or I'm taking a fair value gap or I'm taking an order block. I'm hunting for whatever's in here for me to get at. I may even take, uh, there's my 50%. I'm, I'm gonna wait for at least mean threshold or consequent encroachment of this sibi or maybe i'm looking for consequent encroachment of that There's, those are all pd arrays that sit inside that premium portion of the range so whatever one you pick and there's three of them there and there's three of them here you can pick whatever one you want and there's another one there and there's another one there and there's another one there and then there there's tons of them in here what you specialize in and what you do is like, like derek just explained he says hey man I'm looking. As soon as I break that 50%, I'm hunting for a raise. And then I'm saying, look, I like a 62% of that range. Maybe you're just doing an optimum trade entry and you're pulling your FIB tool and you're saying, I'm going to take this range right here. This is another trading setup altogether. You're saying, I want anything above 50%. So I'll take 62%. I'll take a trade there. I'll take one at 70%. I'll take one at 75% with my fail safe sitting right above this spot right here. So you can use your FIB tool as entry points as well as exit points in terms of your optimum trade entry. If you get a 62%, your optimum trade entry for a short, that's a whole, whole new setup. It's not this one we're talking about, but they oh, see how they overlap. This is the reversal. And you're saying, oh, I'm going to do an optimum trade entry back into this i'll take 62 percent. i'll take 70 percent, and i'll go short i'm not worried about all that stuff there i'm inside that whatever pd array sits me inside here a 62 sits in the middle of that and a 70 puts me right in the middle of that and a 75 puts me right in the middle of that that's bang on i'll take that thing and there's pd arrays sitting right there that's another way you can look for those uh hey one one other thing yeah <laughs> And this is breaking for the just for the breakfast the breakfast club, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't share this anywhere else. Okay. <laughs> you guys get here live, so, live. <laughs> and that is, if I'm feeling timid, let's say I lost a trade that day. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling timid, 
I'm going to let that 1032 candle. I think it's a 1032 candle. Yeah. Because that's a that's a solid yellow candle going up at some yep. point, right? Yep. I mean, through the minute, that's all. That's going to be solid at some point. I'm thinking, uh oh, I'm taking out a high. And then uh, when it comes down and closes, then I think, okay, now I feel like I can get in. That's because that snappy it, it retort. Told me right? It doesn't yeah. want to go higher. Yeah. That's so, that snapback so. that we're talking about, that sensitivity. See how it just rips back yeah. like that? It's like a rubber band. Yeah. Yeah. So there are times I will wait for that thing to close and then I'll enter. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. And that's, remember when we talk about time and price in the 26, 27 candle? 27 candle, yeah. there's your 28 reversal into the bottom half of the hour and then 30 32 <clears throat> there's your 32 reversal inside this if you're looking at time we haven't really i haven't done a video on time yet how precise time can be there's your uh bottom of the hour you can start your crazy ivan look back and then the roll over and come back down that can happen anywhere from 30 to 38 is the crazy ivan reversal look over your shoulder reference they use in hunt for red october so this this 27 28 look for a run back into 30 32 and then 32 to 38 you usually have a, a run all the way down then a 40 42 there's a 40 41 42 45 48 is a reversal 50 52 there's 52 all those are key numbers those those i'll teach you guys later but there's when well, you want to know about precision in time and price and then look for pdras inside that we start adding precision in terms of time you guys are going to be like what the hell the precision can be crazy so that was our our trail so if we pulled our 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 fib tool let's let's do this one again so you guys can see how you can be scaling this out just using your fib tool take it to the nearest swing you could take that one there if you want i like all these big bull candles there's no bear candles in there so I'm I'm running for that so when that starts to you take your entrance in those two trades right there and you start to scale out 50% move your stop loss to break even okay or wherever your break even is that's your break even or just give yourself a little bit of juice right you get yourself to 50% and then you start as soon as we get to this point here look back right here now and say to yourselves where would my fail safe be? You guys tell me. Where would your fail safe be? Kitty's baking while she's listening to the teacher. <laughs> Multitasking. See, now that's a woman's skill. She's just bragging now. She's bragging. She's showing how good she... Men, you notice that the men are just staring at the screen. She's cooking, learning, <laughs> studying, probably making notes. The power of women's multitasking um what are you going to do right here you get to 50 percent. you pay yourself a piece right here and you move your stop loss into break even where's your fail safe going to be now give me right down or you guys who are live here with me tell me what candle is my uh and just look on your charts if you have to what candle is my fail safe going to be sitting on based on what we've done so far just so we can kind of reinforce some of the learning you guys have got here Um, right, I, I'm going to take a, a, a bash at this. I would put it across. There's um, in that leg coming down there. There's a, uh, a, a, a order block basically coming halfway down there. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. And that lines up. That lines up with a um, on on the leg up there. Yeah, you've got. Yeah, so I would put it just behind that. Maybe that order block there. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Or, Okay. Or you could give yourself a bit more leeway and come above the fair value gap above it, or you know, so uh, and just keep keep jagging it down, you know. But, uh, I like yeah. I like the way you're thinking. I like the way you're thinking. But if if you hear his voice, there's a sense of uncertainty there, right? There's a sense of yeah. well, you could you could do this. This is where you need when when you study this, you're going to say, this is the point. If it fails here, I'm out. It's turning against me and that's where the practice comes in and you go I'm absolutely sure it's gonna reverse and go in the opposite direction right now because I watch price and if it moves past there 
It's breaking my fail safe and it's now telling me I'm going in the other direction. You could literally use your fail safe as a point to get out and then just click buy in the opposite direction. That's how confident you should get with that. So let's watch. So if we're looking at this trailing buy here, you got the stop loss here and we've taken this low out. Remember I said, if you take a low out, yeah. the first thing you look for is that stop loss right here or this SIBI right here. It goes down and you go now, if it breaks this to the upside, I know I'm going back up again. There's my spring, this is my reversal. This is the reversal we've been looking for. Same as this reversal here. We look for it right there. As soon as we take that out, we go, ooh, right there. My stop loss now becomes right here because this is my fail safe right there. My stop loss is there. If it rips through me, my fail safe is right here. This is that point right there that we talked about over here. Here is where I make the decision right there. If it trades above it, then I'm, taking, I'm either closing out with number one or I'm waiting for a retracement now back into this inversion right here that becomes my new fail safe and if I do not trade all the way back through that with a body I move down and then another one forms and I go ooh, good now I take my stop loss and I move it to here and I move this one to here and this one becomes the new dynamic fail safe I say if it breaks that one onto the upside, I know I'm going up. So I'm getting out right there. There's my fail safe. My fail safe is trailing me down. So then then all of a sudden it comes down one more time. Oh, look at the look. Yeah, I'm staying in this trade. I pay myself at 50%, right? My fail safe was right there or stop loss was there. My fail safe's right here. And then I go, oh, it's going to continue down to 62. I'll take another bit off there. Thank you very much. And I'll move my stop loss does this this and i move it just above the previous one right there it's pretty tight now so you have to be saying i don't want it i could allow it to come back and tap that maybe right there just leave it above the high of that one and then you say there's my fail safe point right there if i get a body trade above it i'm on the wrong side of this trade now it's going back up so it doesn't yet i just go great and I, it moves down and makes another one. And I go, ooh, lovely, right here. And now I move my stop, my fail safe. I take my profits again at 70%, move my stop loss to the previous points high right here in case it rips through me. And it does this, it goes rip. And it finally breaks it right here. And you go, I'm on the wrong side of this now. You can A, close your trade as soon as that Right here, you start to pull the same rules again. You say, I close out my trade on the close, or I wait for this to open, opens right here, and as soon as it trades back up to it, you're out right there. Or it trades down to here, and you go, all right, it's it's good. Now I take my stop loss, and I move it super snug, and I move it like this, right there. Because I do not want it breaking that high. It's already broken this. I'm trying to collect profits now. I All I want is profit. I'm in profit. I guaranteed myself my stop loss is all the way down to here. This has already given the indication it's going to go in the opposite direction. So as soon as it starts to come back up and it taps me, as in, let's say you, it, it opened down here and came back up and hit this open or you're open again, then you'd say, okay, I'm out there. I'm, I'm, I would close it out right there or there. Either way, you're out in that small spot. All that's profit. Now you say to yourself, oh, look what we got here. We got ourselves a little swing pattern. And the algorithms already told me it's heading under the upside direction. So what I want to do, I rinse and repeat. I take my entry and I put it right down here at the super discount because I know if it breaks through this on the downside, comes back into me, I break even. We're continuing down. This was just a small retracement. We're going to continue on the downside. So now you say, oh, look, I'm going to get right in there. You pop in. It comes to you perfectly and your stop loss, which is so delicious, is sitting right there. So it's even closer. So you've got some really good leverage here now. Now you pull your fib tool and you go, oh, look, let's do a rinse and repeat all over again. Um, we will pull our fib tool from there to this range that I'm in right now, right there. And as soon as it breaks 50% right there, I'm going to pay myself a bit. I'm going to move my stop loss to break even. Pay myself here, pay myself there at that order block, which is a breaker. We think it's a senior candle, so pay yourself there. 
pay yourself there pay yourself there, and you're just or you could be doing that whole trailing stop loss thing we talked about going here i'll take myself there oh i'll take there i'll take there i'll take there I'll, I'll take and it's, it comes back and takes me out right there so you made some more profit right there and you go ha ha i'm good i've taken money all the way down and i've nibbled a bit out of this because i see that there and my ultimate high is right there i'm going to take some out there i'm going to take some out of that order block because now if this one is run through then you say i'm going to pull my fib tool to the next run up the next high i'm back into this range here now because i've blown that high right there right we have a swing point. There's a little point there below. So we'd love to see it get back into here. It doesn't. We have a breaker. So as soon as a body trades above a breaker, which is right here, it comes back and literally taps it right there. And you can continue to the upside. Pay yourself here. Pay yourself at 50%. And you don't get 62. But your stop loss is trailing up right behind you. Does that make sense? Because now all of a sudden we've gone from a different reversal pattern we took the reversal back to here and collected more profits in here then all of a sudden we went oh that's a breaker i'm going to do the old return to the breaker or the consolidation or a cam one model i'm going to catch a cam one and i'm going to run to the next pdra inside my range because now i know that's going from a going up into a premium to potentially go down to a discount and we're pretending that we can't see this piece right here doing this we're just saying it's coming up here i'm going to pay myself at 50 i'll pay myself at 62 if it doesn't hit 62 then i'm and it comes back all the way to 50 it just comes back inside this fair value gap here and rolls over and comes back down again then i gotta ask myself there's the swing point if we get a body trade below that this run up that you're doing here like we did down here rinse and repeat this body breaks this on the downside right there you're out you either close now, now that fail safe is the same thing in reverse your fail safe is here your stop loss was back at break even remember when we hit 50 we moved to break even and as soon as that breaks that right there on the downside and you go i'm either gonna a close out right away or i'm gonna b wait till it retraces back into this fair value gap here so i can cash out and it just goes boop boop touches it again and that's my out right there so as soon as it goes there out you take your stop loss and you move it right up there like that behind there so you're hoping that it comes up to there and you take profit you can move it if you got your take take profit stick up there move it straight down into right into that little zone right there and say i will take my last bit of profit out that right there if you were aiming for up here pull it down into that range because now you've got a reversal that's just happened you get in there stop loss you've now made money on the way up on the way down way up Wait for the reversal on the way up again off the breaker now that's another setup and you cashed in a little piece right here using fib using breaker using your trailing stop loss fail safe hopefully you can see the value of this fail safe now and how uh, powerful it can be if you know how to use it and you know what you're looking for you've got to know your pd arrays you've got to watch what's happening on this one to one one minute because you can tell people might have been thinking oh it's heading back up here for sure no it didn't right there broke is told you right there i'm i've changed my mind that inversion now becomes a senior array i'm thinking we've got a reversal and i'm inside a a larger range premium level so i'm reversing and until we get a reversal back the other way, I'm bearish. Right there, I'm bearish. Contrary to what everybody else may be thinking about what's going to go on inside the thing, you get bearish when you see that your downside inversion has been broken. Now, I'm going to give you a little uh, confusion here to go with this. So hopefully that's kind of sinking in there. And if you, if you want to go back, re review that. If we get retracements like this, and we're gonna we're gonna continue on the downside all the way back down. Let's say this just kept ripping all the way down, then we had this big massive return like this, and we have a PD array that was broken to the upside. You can see how you can capitalize on these arrays really quick if you catch the small little run that you want to get to. That order block there is a great place to aim for, because we tend to come to a low or to the mean threshold and bounce off of that. So put that as your 
uh, exit point if you want or one of your exit points to scale yourself out as soon as you see that opportunity to get in because this may be just a simple retracement for a further run down for the next price leg down so if you're on the wrong side of this you guys can see now you can even be on the wrong side of a trade make money <clears throat> use your fail safe to save you and still make money while being on the wrong side of the trade as long as you're watching the range that you're in what range am i in what pdra is above me or below me that one right there is one that's above me aim for it if you overshoot and you find out that it came back and took you out you got too greedy you overshot your pdras i guarantee you you go back in and double check you say i didn't use that one i didn't use that rejection block look at that it just popped in the rejection block and took off on me <clears throat> or i didn't take this range right here and i didn't take that swing point swing point when you get into consolidations that's consolidation training friends that's your you're pulling your fib tool from high to low to high to low and you're trading inside pd array to pd array pd array to pd array fair value gap to fair value. and then you really got to start being on the ball consolidation trading that's where it starts to get really fun because you got to watch exactly where you are inside that range and say which one have i used up which one's next if they've used up the mean threshold here and the mean threshold here the only one they got left is the rejection block on both sides so that they're probably going to run those and they do and you go great now if you just extended your range and you're pulling back in again you're probably going to run pd array to pd array you're going to run both sides of it you'll see them run premium arrays and discount arrays of the same likeness over and over and over again and you'll see when we do these live that we're going it's going from like array to like array you'll hear me say that many times when you get these retracements back into a range let's say you said i'm going to go short i'm going to stay short and this trades it back against you right here you see that and you say to yourself my overall bias for the day now here's where you really got to be on the ball okay you say my overall bias for the day is short and you see this happening and your stop loss was your entry was up here your stop loss is sitting there you move yourself into break even at least and walk away for the day and just say i believe it's going to head down my daily uh, bias is way down here i know it's going to go there i see it in the, the daily charts that's where i'm headed for the day when you see this you say i don't care here's the higher range i'm in i will allow it to go past into the premium the like array to like array so let me show you like array to like array above 50 percent discount array to premium array see when we make that swing you go ah oh, that's okay i will allow it to go all the way up into a premium array it can even come up into here if it breaks this to the upside then it's a premium array that is broken to the upside chances are that was not just a simple reversal that is a full-on continuation to the upside this was the retracement you have to, on a larger time frame when you're trading on a one minute you've got to allow the range that you're in even if you see it starting to show it'll show you early like this it's saying hey look i'm doing a retracement right now on a one minute chart i'm just going to do a little retracement i'm going to get back up into a premium of this little range we're in you may say i will allow you to come up into the premium so instead of your fail safe being on one of these it ends up being on the premium one because the premium one is the one you don't want broken to the upside if that gets broken then you go I'm on the, my, my trade's wrong for the day. I've got my bias wrong. Then you just take your little bit of profits and you don't sweat this stuff. You're holding out for a longer range. So how you manage your longer range on a one minute chart, you have to give yourself the premium portion of the range you're in, even though there's a lot of times it's told you, I'm reversing, I'm coming back into that range. You can say, that's all right, I'll take that. I just showed you how to trade that coming back into that range. And then you can expect it to hit a premium inside that range peel off of that it shows you that thanks i'm done up in the premium level right here i'm about to head back down again you go that's fine that's fair i'm still short 
I never, I never got long here. I never got out of my trade here. I just allowed you to come all the way back into a premium array. That's what I'm expecting to see when you get up there and you clear out a couple of high, highs here. The reversal pattern happens. I'm expecting to see that. If I don't see that and I keep seeing it blow through my premium array on the upside, I go, crap, it happened down here. I saw it happening, and yet I gave it that much slack on a higher time frame basis before it finally crapped out on me. So that's more advanced way of looking at using your fail safe. Can anybody see right now zero of the fib? I've got the fib in the wrong spot. Sorry, it should be right here. It jumps, it magnetizes to whatever one I'm close to. Thanks, Lambo. Um, so, anybody have any questions with the failsafe? Because I know when my mind just races, I've got 100 things I want to tell you, and it's hard to kind of keep my little ADHD head straight sometimes. I want to share so much stuff with you guys. Is there any questions you have with this? Anything you want me to re-explain? I'm happy to do so. If you have a strategy, you say, okay, Darren, that there's I see an entry right there. That's my entry. Could you show me how I could use a fail safe to protect myself in a particular entry? I will tell me to go to a chart. If you see one on the one of you guys are on the live channel or one of you guys are on the YouTube. If there's a specific page or place you want me to go to, put a trade on and say, tell me how you would manage this with your fail safe. I'll show you how it works. It works in any situation. Oh, I said I was going to show you the uh, cam models and how to use these in cam model situations as well. But I'll wait, see if anybody's got any questions first. Does anybody have any questions on anything we've done so far? Anyone? Anyone? No one? Hey Darren, I'm looking at I'm looking at price action right now, and it, it looks like it may be coming into a consolidation. So you may be transitioning right into the right thing. Yeah, perfect timing, eh? Yeah. So, yeah, let's look at live action. Let's let's clear this lot out of here. Remove drawings. Let's get this cleaned up. Here's a Cam One model body breaks above it we come back into a cam one and you're aiming pull your fib tool from here now when you're when you're using your oh i want to go back i want to un can i unscrew what i just did no i can't put my drawings back on damn here's a reversal that you don't get a chance to look it again <laughs> click this again. sometimes it'll go back multiple times so down in yeah. Darren, yeah. Uh, try Control Z. I think it is. Just try that. Control Z, Control Z, 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 Z. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just a couple of Zs more I needed. Um, so, if this is your cam model right here, there's your pump up above. Come back into your cam one model right here. Cam one stop loss will be sitting straight down in here like this. Now you have to ask yourself, if I trade more than 50% of the candle, like if I have a body that closes below this, comes back into it, you get out of your CAM1 model. That's your that's your fail safe. You may say, well, you know what? I'll give myself, there's a little fair value gap down there. I think I'll give myself a CAM2 model, which is taking the high to the low, take 50% of that. So you take your FIB tool and your CAM model one, and you go make sure you use your template because it makes it clean gets everything else out of your way and you say that's my entry right there that's my cam 2 entry you may say i want to take a cam 1 and a cam 2 there's no cam 3 in here by the way just cam 1 and cam 2 so cam 1 return to the old high and you start aiming for what where am i aiming for what am i aiming for Rejection block. Yes. Yes. I can almost hear Lambo screaming that right now. 
So we enter in here. Where is my first take profit? Right there. Rejection block. Not that one. This is the range you're in. So you make sure you get the first range. So you may say, no, I just want that order block. I'll take one out there. I'll take one out there. I'll take out the 50% of that because it's, it's really a mitigation block when you start to come back up because it doesn't take any lows out. So it's a low, a medium order candle. So you come back up, you say, oh, that's all, all I might get. So if you see it, it literally goes down into a discount. If you, if you pull your Fib tool, you'll see this, what I mean. So anyway, there's your first entry. Pull your Fib tool from there to there, from that range there to that range there. There's 50%. It might even be a 62. Let me have a look. Let me reverse that. Just shy of 62%. Came back, filled that fair value gap, but it's definitely in a discount. Inside that range. Oh, this is where you want to be, right there. There's 62%. That's the range you're in the swing low. So it came back to 62%. Optimum trade entry, and off you go. Excellent. It's also the CAM1 model. It's also an optimum trade entry model and doesn't give you your CAM2. We aim for rejection block, old high, breaker. This is a breaker up here now because it's the last up close candle before that swing below that low, that low, all the way down. So that breaker becomes important. So you might want to say, I just want to trade to that. So you went in here, hit it right there perfectly and it rejected off. Where did it reject to? The next range. Let me get this out of the way here so it doesn't get in your way. Next range, right there. I'll make this a little bigger for you. Just shy of 50% came inside that fair value gap right there. Did not give you that. That's interesting. Am I on the right one? Yeah. So you wouldn't even have got your 50%. And you see this this swing point, see how that, we've just taken this high out, this high out, look for these right away. As soon as you see a swing point taken out, look for that high and you go, ooh, come on, baby, daddy needs a new car. So you you got to get yourself on the other side of this. So it needs to trade through this, come back to it, there's your swing. It didn't, you see that? It didn't. So your fail safe, if you're going long on a swing point that you swung below here and the body took you out right there, we came back inside our trade here. Our stop loss is sitting down here. There's our entry. We're starting to go long. We're unloading at the top of the fair value gap, the rejection block on the way up. You come back in, another opportunity. You're saying to yourself, if it breaks this on the downside now, we might be getting another run back down into the lower one. It doesn't take it out. So you trail your stop loss, your trailing, your fail safe behind you and say, I don't want it to break that. Or you pull your fail safe rules right here. It breaks that high, creates another one. You go, great, now my fail-safe rule gets to move. My stop-loss moves to here. My fail-safe is right here. Because if it breaks the downside of this, comes back into it, I know I'm going to go short. It doesn't. No bodies close below that, so you run up a little higher yet. Again, multiple different ways you can manage this. The Fib tool, you're out already. Or you're saying, no, I want to just, I'm going to manage it with these fail, fair value gaps. When I see a reversal happening on the other side, I'm out, okay? So you go right here. This one doesn't get traded through. Another one happens. Then another one happens, you get below this one. This one happens, you get below this one. Then all of a sudden, that one happens, you go, sweet, now I get right into this guy right here. And this is what happens here. So your stop loss is sitting right here. That's your maximum lo loss you're willing to take because you've trailed it all the way up to here now. All of a sudden, you see another one, you go, sweet, this is going to be my fail safe. If I trade below this and trade back into it, I'm out. But it doesn't. It goes ripping right through you, which is exactly what we have the stop loss for. And you've maximized profits from down here on beautiful entries. Like that's your slot, that's your drawdown right there. That's your drawdown. Fails your stop loss is moved all the way up to here. But it, you see how it moves up in a logical pattern? It's not, well, I could put it here. And I don't mean to, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, Paul, but when you, when there, there's that level of, well, you could kind of have a little bit of flexibility here. No, that's your, that's your stop loss. I'm not taking anything below there. And now that I've got a break in market structure to the downside, if it stops here, trades back into this, I'm out. 
Now I'm short. I'm going to go short on that. If you're really quick, you're just literally going in and out, in and out. And every time it breaks that inversion, that's where the algorithm is showing you. I'm tipping my hat. I'm telling you where I'm going. Some of you may choose to say, as soon as a wick gets through it, I'll take that as my opportunity. If a wick goes through it, it says, I'm, I'm hinting where I'm going. It comes back up, gives you an opportunity to get in and slam. You may do wicks. I don't like wicks. I don't like wicks. I want to see a body get through that. That tells me that definitely we've got a break in structure. You don't get a chance to get on there. Who cares? So what? I'll wait for another one. I'll wait for this one if I have to. Right there. Hmm. I guess I don't get that one either. Oh, well. You wait. Oh, okay. I'll wait for this one. Oh, damn. I don't get that one either. Okay. Well, I'll wait for this one. Oh, here's one. Now I'm in. Oh, great. Now I get to make some money. You missed that one. You missed this one. You missed this one. You didn't miss that one. Doesn't matter. They happen. Look at that. From 10, 11 o'clock to 11.53 of them turned up. You got one that get paid you money. And you had that much drawdown. I don't know about you folks, but that's freaking awesome setup, as far as I'm concerned. Right? And now you've got something that protects not that old-fashioned thing you used to do, just dropping a stop loss in there, and you were doing this, praying that it wouldn't come back and take you out. Now, if you understand price action enough to know that if that inversion gets taken, even by the slightest amount, I'm out. I won't take it. I won't take it. Here's a good example of how you could lose using, because I want to show you some of the, the, the drawbacks to this, all right? Because this is where you are going to find out a little bit about a psychology about how you guys and you ladies think. So here's a swing point. See this? Body trades above it right there. And you go, oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And it comes all the way down. You get in, and all of a sudden it closes below your fail safe like this. You go, uh oh, it's closed below me. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to use Darren's rule and I'm going to get out. As soon as it comes back into me, I'm out of my trade. Okay, I'm out of my trade. I go, okay, I'm out of my trade. And then it takes off for you, right? If you're really steely-eyed, you'd see that there's still another opportunity to get in here. And if you're advanced enough to see this, you'll see that I'm giving myself some slack. I'm giving myself the mean threshold of that candle. You see that right there? So that stop-loss rule, that's the play I've been trying to tell you guys about. That's the play you have to decide for yourself. I can't do it for you. You'll have to decide that if that's my fail safe, my entry was right there and it closed below me, as soon as it comes back into me, I'm out. Your stop loss is here. You may say, you know what? I'm going to give it some slack. If it closes below here, I'll actually cause that. That'll be my exit because I know that can be my line in the sand that it could come back to and trade away from because I know that's an, that's an important array, uh, an important candle for support. If this swing is going to hold that mean threshold is the line in the set it must hold price so you might give it a little bit of slack and say i'm just going to leave my stop loss there it's still pretty close and i'll i'll take my one percent loss that's again finessing your style your way of managing it whatever the heck you like okay but if you if you do that let's say you did say that you said i'm getting out here i, I don't like that and you say all right here's another one if it breaks to the upside of this i'm going to get long again i'll get back in again so here you see this right here body breaks above it right here here's your opportunity boop now you're in now it takes off were you quick enough to see that because this one here you think oh yeah but there's a one that's on the other side of it darren and that one's gonna that's a contradiction we've broke below it that means we're gonna go short really did we break an old high we use this only when we break an old high. We didn't break an old high here. So you don't use it. So it's knowing when and when not to use the fair value gap versus the inversion. We want this to provide support. Want to continue higher. So there's a lot of 
a lot of things going on in there. You've got to really know what you're looking for to find out whether or not that was support versus resistance. And if you want to argue that that's the other side and you say, no, it traded below that candle, I'm going to get short here. And you go, I'm going to use this. If that's going to be my short, here's how you're fail safe. Even if you're wrong, let's say you, you went short right here. It traded below. You're like, I'm going short. I think this is going to be another continuation down. It didn't break the high. That's your rule. But you let's say for some reason you got in anyway. You see how it trades below and you wait because you want the best opportunity to break even if you're wrong. You can go here. You can go here. Go here. Look at the range. That's the premium, the most premium inside these three candles that you could possibly be in on that swing. That candle and that one, they're practically overlapping. So you want to be way up and tight with that. So let's say you go in here, you enter. You, as soon as it comes up to you here, you enter in and it closed above. You go, crap, I'm wrong. As soon as it comes back to me, I'm getting out. I'm getting out and I'm going to go long now. Now you can go long. See how that you have to see this point here. That's your fail safe point, And it traded above you, gave you one opportunity to break even and then left you alone. If you didn't do it quick, if you didn't go, oh, I'm on the wrong side, I'm going to move my stop loss right into here now. Or as soon as that one closes, right there. As soon as it opens, and I'll, I'll take that as a stop loss instead of way down or way up there or wherever it was you had your stop loss. Does that make sense? Hopefully you guys can see that. So you can, if you're smart and you're quick and you practice, practice, practice. The only way you're going to get good at this is if you practice it on a demo account until you see it to the point where you're just boringly moving out. Oh, if I'm on the wrong side of that, then I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I'm out right at my break even. So I'm going to put my take profit right here because this is where my profit was. Now I'm going to drown my take profit right up against my stop loss because I want it to come back and tag me out. And my stop loss, which is sitting up here. That traded above me i'm not going to let that stop loss go there i'm going to put it right there so if it opens on me again and taps me i'm out if it closes with no wick then just close it out because it may just take off you may not get that opportunity to come back here you may just give it one little pop up and say no it's popped up that one little pop down okay now i'm out break even and it would take you out real quick because you got your stop loss trailed in there Hopefully that helps you guys. So your fail safe is the same kind of principle. Every time, everywhere you put your line in the sand, if it breaks this point, that's where your fail safe is dynamic. It will move to that point. And as soon as it breaks there on the downside, whatever cluster of root rules you want to put right here on that break above, Whatever rules you guys decide for yourself, and I've given you a bunch that you can use, whether or not you're using that order blocks mean threshold to be your line in the sand, that you'll allow it to wiggle up there a bit before finally coming back down, or you'll take, let the rejection block get hit, but you won't let it go any further into the rejection block, that's fine. Whatever your rule is, you decide what you want here. I'm just showing you that that point right there, when you close above it, it's going in the opposite direction. Yes, you might have a little bit of, you might see all this. I'm all right with that. Uh, if I even took a loss there and it came all the way back and said, you, you could have left with a profit. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. You don't know for sure. That's why we have that rule. Don't judge what you make your decision on here based on future information you haven't gotten yet. We always assume it's going to come back and take us out. And, take, and if it rips off on you, who cares? Here, you'd be happy that it rips off because now you go, oh, yeah, I was right. It just came back to that order block there. Okay. Any questions? Anything else I can uh, point out to you guys? See this here? We have a swing above. Fair value gap right here. Let that close below there. And where we aim for? You only got this one here in that little range. You're in a discount array already. All right, and we've already traded a swing point here and we're going up, coming back down inside it. So we've got one that says to go short and one that says to go long. What's your overall bias? Do you see this down here? There's a fair value gap down here yet to fill. 
you have to get your higher time frame bias decide on whether or not you want to get in on that so if you want to enter it real quick right there if you really want your discount and your fail safe to work really well it's got to go here inside that fair value gap if not just watch this now just now practice your your fail safes stop loss it's up here let's do some live stuff okay so we've now been tripped in you're tripped in now what are you asking yourself ask yourself those rules now what range am i in or if you're a fib tool person you just say screw the all the, i don't want to think about all those damn pdras i gotta try and think of 50 percent's above you do you think oh man that really sucks <laughs> i bought it in a at a discount was that the best place to put my entry yeah probably not you're not going to make a lot of money because you're paying a discount and want to get even more of a discount on it so you might want to kind of uh Look at your entrance being above your 50%. If it comes back to you, great. So let's say you, well, we got two entries. We'll say we got one there and one here, and then the last one's up there. Our stop losses all keep loading up up top there. Usually you trade from one reversal to the next reversal. See how they're overlapping? This one here, validating it here, is also validating this one short. So when you got that, when they're that close, you don't mess with them. But we're just going to try and play this out. Like, let's say we're wrong. I want the fail safe because that's what we focused on today is the fail safe. So we want to see it fail so we can see how, how much loss we would have taken. So there's our second entry. There's our third entry right there. Now watch this. Oh, that's not looking good. We're already into rejection block already, right? You already threw the mean threshold of that, that candle right there. So this doesn't look good already. You go, oh, this is looking bad. Now, out. Now we take your stop loss. We're going to move it right to here. Right there. Sorry. We're going to move it right there. Okay. So now that's our true stop loss and our take profit, which we have down here. Boop. It's just taking us out. So that there, all these stop losses that were sitting up there are now sitting right there. Now, if that didn't tag us, as soon as it comes back to here, your take profit now will move up to here because we have a break above this so now we're going to go up this could come all the way back into this order block which is in a discount array if you really want to get cocky you say well if that rejection block holds now which i want it to i'd love to see it come back into that order block so i put my i'm going to wait for this one to be in profit this one to be slightly underwater no it's taking you out now so you see how you're, you're stop loss would not have been hit we'd be out right there or as soon as it gapped down like that you heard me say i'm out <laughs> as soon as it happens like that you're like holy crap it just literally practically gapped right down to your entrance and you're out and you watch as it takes this out now So then you think, oh, this was the one that was actually supporting a decent swing down. This one here with this little lame swing above, you can see it. And then you start to say, which one was stronger, below bodies or above wicks? Right, these little wicky, the small little run here, not really pumping up above any major high. It was just a little swing point. This one was definitely dropping below some serious swing points. This one's got a lot more strength for it. That might be your rationale. When you study price enough, you'll start to say, this is a stronger swing than this strong swing. We didn't take out any significant high. We just took out this little intermediary short guy right here, right? So you may not put a lot of strength in that. But at least 
you didn't get your full stop loss taken. Does that make sense? Do you guys find that useful? We'll see. Well, I found that bloody amazing, mate. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you like it, Paul. Yeah, I mean, that that's... I'm going to take a lot away from this afternoon, I'll be honest with you. You know, um, I, I'm now looking at the trading range that you're in, you know, the level that you're in, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> even, you know, down to the bigger range and the range inside the range and and everything till we break a, a proper swing point and everything and change, you know, the changing structure or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, um, even down to the smallest, you know, the minute time frames. Um, and what you've taught today, you know, like when you pulled me up earlier about the putting the stop above the order block, as soon as I said it, I realised, I thought, shit, that's not right anyway, <laughs> you know, but... No, that's good, though. And, you're, you're already starting to and, think that, okay, I could be wrong. My mind's going, no, I think there's something different there. I like that. Yeah, and, 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 and because I've got it wrong, I'll remember that now. Mm. And, and then since then, you've taught me basically what what the rights are you know and uh that's I'll, i shall remember that now you good, know so that's good. yeah <clears throat> that's that's excellent i'm i'm glad that it's uh it helps to solidify it for you see how now we've we've got a body got this traded below this <clears throat> now see how this isn't yeah. a swing point yet right so we're in a consolidation so that range is the range you're playing trading in we have this down close candle and the largest up close candle that supports uh, the highest body which is this guy right here you're literally inside this guy and that guy and you see how we've already traded through the mean threshold of him so unless we trade back up to there and get short we're we're just going to take those lows out see how the mean threshold closed below it so we knew it was going to go down so now you have to pull a larger time frame and if we eat through this one then you have to pull a bigger one here so this swing that happened here yeah that's a swing it did not take out your stop loss you see that this one here, if you would have taken this as a reversal pattern and your stop loss was up here, if you didn't use your fail safe and just left the old stop loss sitting right there, then you go, great, what did it trade into? Look over here. It traded back into the gap, right into the mean threshold of that gap, and then literally said, okay, now I'm ready to go. And all it did was just trade into up into a premium inside that larger range there, inside that order block. You could say, I'm going to give this one the mean threshold, the largest up close candle, big beefy candle, the mean threshold of that candle is, is my line in the sand. If I break that on a close, I'm out. It didn't. And that's why I can see why it found support there at the mean threshold of the breaker. It's the large up close candle before I run below these lows, right? That's a big ass breaker. It's a senior array. And we sat right there on the mean threshold of it. We wicked try to get through it it was like hell no we're holding firm i didn't see that till i just saw it I'm like how did that support price oh yeah okay there's a breaker right there i mean threshold of course lovely 50 percent. we did not trade above 50 percent of the wick if you like the wick we did not trade above 50 percent of the gap all these things are all pdras that provide levels of support but my rule is i'm out right there you wouldn't have got your stop taken. You would have been in a killer trade on the way down. And you cursed Darren and his damn fail safe. I could have been in that. My stop loss is right here. Damn you, Darren. You don't know what you're talking about. I gave up that trade all because of that stupid rule of yours. All right. Whatever works for you. Right? Then you're going to see times where it literally trades in the direction you thought it was going to go to. This is the kind of stuff you've got to start journaling. What were you thinking when it did go in your direction, did you say to yourself, shit, I screwed that up? Or you say, I love that my fail safe saved me that little piece right there. That's all I lost for that one. And these two guys, they actually lost money. And my leverage here lost a little bit. That one lost some, that lost the most. And then it traded in that direction. I don't care. My rule was, bro my rule was broken, so I'm out, mm -hmm. right? You move to the sidelines and wait for another setup because believe me, that's happening here shortly. When you see this break here, get excited right now. Go, ooh, look at this one sitting right here. If we trade above that, get into this, 
we got all this sitting up here again in this big range to start aiming for. Don't get all upset that you missed it. Once it traded through, you go, oh, good. I didn't get in it here, but now I'm going to put sell orders in right there, right there, and right there to go short. Even though it didn't, you know, it didn't break an old high, so it's not a, again where you're repeating the same rule uh, that we didn't take out an old high except for this one right here. This doesn't take out a high, so you shouldn't take it. But mm. we, as soon as it trades through the the breaker or the the mitigation block, I should say, because it does not take out that old high, that becomes mitigation. See how we trade through the mean threshold of it right there, and then we trade back to it. Tip. We just tap it right there, and then start running through mitigations not a great candle it's a medium strength candle it's not like a basic order block it's not a definitely not a breaker it's one of, if you're looking at chess pieces it's more of your bishops and your rooks it's not the queen or the king these inversions are the, yeah sorry. yeah what 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 I've learned from you, Darren, as well. Um, what what I've got used to trading is, you know, the Nasdaq. I suppose really, because that's all I've been sort of looking at with with Hydra, if you like. Right. Um, is is it, his main focus is the the draw liquidity, you know, at macro time. So we'll say, right, what what's it leaving behind? You know, you've got trend line liquidity, you've got this liquidity, you've got whatever. Right. And, it, and at certain times, you'll say, right, we're going to get a reversal or we're not going to get a reversal or this is a trend continuation, which is great. Right. And I was tending to concentrate too much on that, right? Always mm. to draw liquidity. But what I've learned from you is is a lot, lot more in depth. You know, you're trading from one PDRA to another PDRA, which is, I know what we do, mm -hmm. but I've I'd lost focus on that. Does that make sense? Because I, I, yeah. I've got it in my mind all the time. I'm going, right, where's the next equal highs? Where's the next equal lows? I'm, I'm going to target that. Right. And I lost lost track of the bigger picture, if that makes sense, you know? so Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people uh, will tend to look at, uh, and as you saw here, none of this was based on a one hour. None of it was based on a five minute. And I hear people, you know, sometimes people will make comments in the side. There's, oh, yeah, but it bounced off a, a five minute or it bounced on a 15 minute. And I go, well, that none of that stuff alters what we're doing on a one minute chart. I don't care what's happening on all those other those other charts unless they are your objective. Those higher time frames, unless you're trading on that time frame. Or you're looking at that time frame because this to me i look at this i go that's a daily chart right there that's an hourly chart it's a four hour chart i don't care what chart you give me whether that's <coughs> a synovus oil company or whether it's mom and pop's chip company i don't give a crap it is the mm -hmm. algo and if i understand how the algo is working on a one minute chart all those other charts are going to be telling me the exact same things now Here's the benefit of having higher time frame charts. If this, if I saw this forming, uh, let's see, let's get a better example. This one here we saw this morning. If I saw this happening on the one hour chart coming up into here, I'd be going, oh man, look at the one hour chart, you guys. We're looking for the optimum entry in the next hour to go short. Man, have we got a lot of PDRAs below us. We got a festival of fun. This whole next hour, we could trade all the way down in the next hour, the moment we reach one, two, three. So on that hour, you're looking right there, do we have one of these swing points happening on the one minute chart? Right there at the one hour. Nope, it kept going up. What about there, the midpoint? Nope, kept going up. Then all of a sudden, right there at the top of the hour, or the top of that inversion there, you see this happening on a one minute chart and you go, oh, my hour chart says this is an optimum time for me to catch this guy right here to go short. Now you put your stop loss there. You put your order in there. You've now seen it manifest on a one minute chart. Now you're hourly. You take your your stop loss and you go and you drag it all the way down to where you want it to finish up uh, on your next one, you'll say 50% or pull your fib tool on your one hour chart. 
50, you start putting in your sell orders in there or your buys. You buy, if I put five up there, you go, I'll buy one there and I'll buy one at 62, buy one there and I'll buy one there. And my trailing stop loss, my fail safe is going to go up there. And I just let this one minute chart do whatever the hell it likes. <clears throat> right? So, so basically what, what, what you're saying is then if you've got a higher time frame, say you've got a, a four hour fair, fair value gap, right? For right. instance. Yeah. Um, and then a one hour breaker or whatever within that and then right down to a 50 minute. So all, all those PD arrays all match up, right? Yeah. But you were trading the one minute time frame. Right. Basically, you, 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 you're not really bothered about that, are you? No. That's what you're saying. No. Right. I don't no, care about not, all uh, that new stuff. I don't care about uh, <clears throat> higher time frame stuff unless I look and I just go straight. You'll see me start off my day. And I'll start the morning off going through all these different assets up top here. And I'll look at the daily and go, where am I going today? Now, mm -hmm. what's what's a perfect time and price <clears throat> that I can get in short in that time of day? And I'm going to look for this kind of setup. And I see it happening on the hourly. And I go, oh, man, when that lines up right there in the hourly, I'm going to look for this thing happening on the one minute chart at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm looking for my silver bullet entry right there at 1021. There's my reversal starting to happen. And I'm going to see as soon as that comes in here, I'll go, there's my silver bullet. Oh, baby, when that comes back in there, it's also my reversal. It's also my one hour. I'm going to ride that all the way down to the bottom of the hour. And I literally, you can literally ride it from there. Or you just say, great, I'm guaranteed to go short here. You catch your short, pull your fib tool on the hour and just unload it at the fib tool every hour. Or you just say, I know where I'm going. My bias is always going to be short. So I can con I can continue writing this down by using the uh, uh, fair value gaps to run down until they break it to the upside. Then I get out and I'll start running it back. And I'll, <clears throat> if you want to get really cocky, Paul, you'll end up saying, I don't care. I'm going to run this all the way down. And the moment I see it break market structures to the upside, I'm going to close out my down trade and I'm going to get in on my long trade and I'm going to trade back in the range that I'm in. And as soon as I get 50% out there and it breaks my downside, I'm going to close that one out and I'm going to get back short because I know I'm headed back down here for the hourly because I know what my hourly is telling me. So I can literally trade both sides of the market and you'll feel a lot more comfortable about trading both sides of the market because you'll know this is just going to be a retracement. I expect this to continue down on the hourly. I'm going to catch a 50% retracement back into a range. That would be your range right here. If you said, I'm going to pull from, let's say you caught this little reversal here. You, you see this one and you go, oh, I'm going to get in on that. As soon as it gets back to 50%, well, that's optimum trade entry. I can get that short again. 50, 62%, I'm out, out, scale myself out. And if, it's, if I get a swing point happening here, I'll take that. If I get a swing point happening here, I'll take that. I'll take a piece out on the way up. And I'll scale out as soon as I see that swing. I'm looking for this every single time I reach my next PD array. Do I care what's going on over 15 minute, five minute? I don't give a crap about with that. I'm watching right here, range that I'm in. I'm zeroed in and I am on the horse. He is trying to buck me off here and I'm seeing, oh, you're reversing. You're turning and spinning on me, are you? That's fine. I'll get back in here. I'll load in here, here, and here. Put my stop loss real tight. If I'm wrong, my fail safe will either get me out or I'll get a full loss. And then I'll look back and go, oh, yeah, there's a swing. Yes, it broke below there. I wouldn't have got back on anyway. So I'm trading between that one and that one. Yeah, I could have got bumped, bu bumped off there, but I didn't. I got in, ran it all the way back up again. So it's... <clears throat> You'll, you won't see me when I do, if you go back through any of my shows, you'll see that I don't talk a lot about higher time frame stuff when I'm sitting in a one minute chart. I'll go, I'm between this candle and this candle. That's all I'm focusing on. And that, once you get good at reading every range that you're in, every fair value gap that will support or not support price, every inversion that turns into a senior array, every breaker, you get so good at recognizing those swing points, they become so solid in terms of your fail safe it becomes so solid because you look at that and go no if it breaks that point it's the algorithm tipping its hat right there it's tipping its hat it's coming back down into this range well is it tipping its am i in the middle of the range when it tips its hat then i go okay well let it buck i'll just let it come down to a discount array 
Is it coming back into a consolidation? Is it coming back into a propulsion candle? Once you understand them, this one minute chart is a one day chart. And then you imagine getting your bias once you understand that and it comes back, taps you in and starts running and you look at the day range you're in. You say, I can stay in this chart for another two, three more days going down. I can pull 50% of an entire weekly range and I can trade that on the way down. Oh my goodness, what if this was a month? Let's go into another asset. Let's just pick one. This is this is called this is a an ETF. U Tesla it's called. Or Y Tesla or oh no, this is the Tesla one. Okay, there's another one called Y Tesla. Uh yeah, that's the what, what Y T S L. So this is an ETF based on Tesla stocks. Um <clears throat> So once you're inside a range and you look for your, your setup, so let's look for a setup where we get a reversal pattern. Uh, we have a reversal, a swing point here. We have now reversals are not just fair value gaps. They are gaps. They are price imbalances. All of those things you can use as um, reversal patterns. So we've got here, we've got below it. We literally opened up below it, traded back into it right here on the wick to go short right there you see that gap now a lot of people will say well that gaps just it just gapped down on you well as soon as it comes back up into this array that that uh, price imbalance now you may go ah no i don't like that well because you're looking at how it suddenly was doing this rocketing up and you say no is that is that going down that opened there today right there forget all this stuff it opened right there you're watching it open today and you go oh my goodness it's just gapped down below this if it comes back into that, I'm going to get that short right there, right in the mean threshold and the high of that. My stop loss is going to go up here. This is a daily chart. And you say, if it comes in there, I'm, I'm buying it short. I'm going to short it. Where am I shorting for? I'm shorting for right here. There's my first rejection block and this old gap to fill. And look at that gap to fill right there. Old low. Rejection block. You pay yourself. One day you pay yourself some money. You move to the sidelines. Then wait. If this breaks this high, on the upside, you're going to go up. Let's look for those same kind of thing up here. There's a reversal down here. So you're waiting for body to get above this point right here. This is just a, this is an ETF, okay? This is a an ETF that only trades Tesla stock on covered calls. So it's a combination of option and uh, covered calls or trading covered calls. We have a body here. We trade above it. As soon as we come back to that, I'm going to get off my senior array right now or cam one model. There's your cam one model right here. Er, bang. You hit it. You also hit the inversion. You come back into it. So it's an inversion cam one model. And you literally got in with zero drawdown, folks. You bought an ETF at $18.59 that pays 30% dividends a year and every month they pay you. So you make 2% on your money every month. And it starts at $18.59 and you never had a drawdown. And you ran all the way up and you're just collecting, you're clipping coupons. You're saying as soon as it gets to here, I'll take some profits. If it takes there and there, I'll take profits. Or I just wait for a reversal to happen. I'm going to stay in this chart now. You start off in May and you start riding this baby up and you wait for the first reversal where a body trades below. Oh, it does not trade below. You gap down. You may say, as soon as it comes in here, I'm out. You sell it at $27. You bought it at $18 and you made from May all the way into June. You made another extra 2% on top of the 50 some odd percent you made and you're moved to the sidelines you're done for the year you're done for the year okay i hope you see that i hope you see that and you wait for that setup in a stock pick a stock someone give me a stock i don't care what they are give me one and i'll, I'll put it in here either type it on the side there derek's got to go sorry about that Fernando, I'm glad you're you're picking up some stuff here. Anybody give me a stock? Write it up there and I will uh 
just just go for Amazon. Amazon. Go for Amazon. Yeah, that was a yeah. that Amazon's easy one. Okay, we'll give it Amazon. 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 You guys happy with Amazon? Okay, let's do Amazon. All right, so we've got a, we've got a, a, we're looking for these reversal patterns where we have a body breaking above a swing point. Okay, so or breaking below a swing point. So we're looking for a setup. We're looking here's an inversion right here. We uh, we get below this low. We have a little gap above us here. We treat back into that gap. Stop loss is sitting right here. You're out. That one doesn't work. But where's our fail safe? Our fail safe gaps below us. Right there. There's your entry. The wick down came back up. And you go, okay, good. Then it went down. It literally opened here. Is that is that a down candle? Opened here and came down and closed there. You go, oh, I'm out. As soon as it closes below you, you're out. Or you wait for as soon as that candle pops below it again, you're out. Your stop loss wasn't taken. Or it trades back into you. And if you, were, if you could keep... No, oh, your stop loss would have been taken right there. I'm looking for another uh, swing point. Uh, here's your reversal. Body doesn't take it. Uh, mm -mm, this is all kind of bullish. I want to give you guys a really solid one. I tell you, if you wait, everybody wants to buy in at these things. Just wait for your setup to happen in these stocks and you'll kill it. Okay, so we could say, I'm trying to find something in here. Oh, there's a huge gap right there. Oh, there's this one right here. I was like sitting, where is that open? Oh, it's up there. So there's a huge one from here to here. As soon as the body breaks below that, right here, it breaks below it. You trade back into it. Now your stop loss is sitting way up there, obviously. And then you're starting to collect. So you're, you're collecting at the lows inside the range. Your 50%, 62%. If you pull your fib tool from the, uh, if you rent from the high to the low right there. If you got in on this piece right here, you're right at 50% of that range. So 62%, move your stop loss to break even. Comes back up, doesn't get you. Runs to 70%, move your stop loss to 62. Comes back up and you finally get cleaned out right there. Oh, it actually goes down to 70 nine percent perfectly and you slam right up against 75 and it literally takes you out right there in profits if you're using your fib tool the fib tool setup and that was 103 dollars all the way down to 96 so nine bucks so ten percent ten percent over the course of four days how many of you guys spend all year leaving your money in the hands of the bank to give you seven percent for the year and you just made 10% in four days. In four days. And then you wait for your next setup. You've got your whole year taken care of, banked, sitting on the sideline, waiting for your perfect setup. You've got the whole year banked. You've bought yourself an entire year of time. That's how I look at it. I go, I bought myself a whole year to wait for my perfect setup. And when I see it, I jump on it, put my stop there, and as soon as I pull my fib tool, I'm going to start riding that because I trust my arrays. Okay. Here's one right here. So we have a swing. There's a big gap sitting right here. We trade back up right there. Oh, you're just short of it. Sorry, it didn't work. That one didn't work. Oh, no, right here. Swing. Get a body trade below the swing. Uh, it swings above you again. Yeah, you would have to use this one here. Body closes below you here. Definitely confirms it here. Now, do you trade back into the gap? I don't know. You'd have to study it a little bit more on that one. Um, here's... That's not really a swing below that low. This one's a swing here. If we get back into this area here, or anywhere between that candle and that candle's high, stop loss will be sitting here. You probably just what's the low on that candle 101.26 the low on this candle here is 101.40 so you actually didn't get your stop loss taken and you would have caught the run back into that range optimum trade entry 50% start scaling yourself out at your fib tool you would have made 10% on that if you would have bought right there 
between those two. Now, again, if the body trades below it, you may get out and then realize, ugh, could have made some money. So wait, wait for a really good swing point. Like these are kind of choppy, right? They're easy to, let's look for, oh, here's a beautiful one. Look at this. See, there's your nice little gap right there. You've taken out some highs. So look for this setup right here. And this one you may have been waiting for all year. And you go, oh, sweet cheapers. I like this. It trades below me right here. I'm in. I'm scaling in some money here. And I'm putting my stop loss right above that. I scale in and then literally one, two, three, four, five days later, you're already 166. That's $16 drop inside that range and you pay yourself on the way down. Obviously you can't uh, short uh, Amazon. So you have to wait all the time for the run. So here's, here's your run above. So here's your swing. You're waiting all the time for this one. Right, so back in March, you wait for the March low, the swing above, it trades above it. You go, sweet, the moment it comes back into here, here, and here, I'm going to go long. I'm aiming for rejection block. I'm in pulling my fib tool again, and I'm pulling it inside this one, take out some money, pulling that one, take out some money, rejection blocks, and you would have been in here, one, and you would have had the mean, the middle one as well, and then one, two, three, four, five, six days later, one week later, you've taken those highs out and you've made 41 to 60, that's 20 bucks. That's 10, 12% in six days. And you say, oh, that's it, my trade. Oh, no, no, I've got one more opportunity. The next week you get another opportunity to short it and you're in a, another 10, 20%. So you've gained 20% on your account over the course of two and a half, three weeks. Does this happen on every freaking chart? Doesn't matter. PayPal. Let's do PayPal. I don't know what PayPal is. P-Y-P-L. -P Does this happen on PayPal? Here's a swing point above an old high. Body breaks below it. We're, we close below it. We trade back up into it right there. Bink. You bought it at, or sold it at 87 bucks. Stop loss is sitting up here. Sold at 87. Pull your fib tool from that range. Take your 50%, 62%. Rejection block. So you're buying it at 87. You're selling it at 71. That's already $17. That's 20% in the course of a couple of weeks. Does it work? Can you see it happening, folks? <laughs> Swing point right here. Body breaks below it. Oh, uh, you get into it about a week or so later. Catch it now. You literally catch it perfect right there. You've got about a Aaron, 20 cent drawdown. Uh, yeah. Could you, um, I'm, I'm going to have to go soon. Yeah, yeah. Could you just have a look at um, gold, for instance? Gold, sure. Yeah. I'm going to have to go very soon anyway. Hey, no so. worries, no worries. I've got to call her quits today too. Otherwise, I'll just talk my freaking ear off all. Uh, where's gold? That's dividend. I had a gold producer here somewhere, did I not? Bitcoin? Nah. MQ. Oh, I used the wrong one. Crap. All right, let's just pick gold. Uh, which one? The first one? No, that's commodity capital. Gold. I think we use the net. That one on gold. Can you do this on a commodity, he says. Can you do this on a commodity? We have a swing. And if you're waiting for your ideal setup, to happen not quite a perfect entry there but pretty close uh, looking for <clears throat> consolidation body breaks above it come back into it you've already taken out the high 
Remember, if you take out a high, its next return to it loses its luster. You want to catch it on a pop up, come back in, so then you can start closing it out on the high. Once it takes the high out, you have to look for those reversal patterns, right? So if the reversal, which is the wick right here, body takes, or the wicks take this old high out here, we have a, the uh, price imbalance, body trades below it, we come back up inside it right here, and run back down into breaker. All the way out to the rejection block, it doesn't quite take out the low, reverses right here, body trades above it right there we trade back into it right there with precision right on the money and you read back up from breaker to breaker or breaker yeah that would be a breaker there's a swing so from uh from here to your breaker from here to your breaker in that range bang you hit that again here's your reversal again body breaks below it you trade back up into it right here and slam oh you're shorting it here and you're you're collecting ducats there then you get the reversal happening again body breaks above takes out the old high so be careful we have a reversal so you're between this one here and this one here do you want to take it no wait for a new setup wait for a cleaner setup there is that that's not a swing that i would totally rely on we haven't got a swing there swing above body doesn't break that low so you're still going higher mm, this one here here's a good example your your uh, reverse your fib tool gets or your um, fail save doesn't work it won't save you right there see how close you are to your this was the reversal which it's not because unless you call that a swing again not a strong swing not like a valid one way down here so if you want to use that as a, a continuation to the uh, upside and the body breaks that remember the rule is this has to break out a significant low and it's not really taking out a significant low it, that is a swing point but if you trust that is a good swing point to key off of to go higher uh, then good for you as soon as that body breaks that high right there comes back inside it you're going to go for the next run up rejection block and old high so that one will get you a long one day candle would have got you full profits to that high and that rejection block then we get the reversal happen here we've got a swing above do we get back into it nope and it continues all the way back down we have a swing below the low we have a break right here body gets above it Do you get a chance to get on it nope here's has not taken out this old high here yet you might look at these as old highs if you do see if your fail safe works body does not trade below there until there trades below comes back up all the way inside here and you go oops I'm on the wrong side of this this is still going higher so it opens gaps up take your profit take your stop loss right there before it gets uh, taken out so you would you'd only lose from there to there again did you enter in on the premium or the discount reversal body this body closes it does close below that you see that right there then runs all the way back up inside it and then you can get short so it works there as well again you wait for your perfect entries until you're absolutely convinced here's a swing pattern below an old low there's your gap body trades above it you come back inside it stop losses here running for your first your next pdra inside your range which is this order block here it ran up to that that becomes a breaker it's the parent swing for this one down here you came back up inside it back down to it so breaker to breaker 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 and back up again swing point right there do we trade back to it right there you do run back up inside the range you're in order block it peels down comes in gives you one more chance to go long it closes below you and go ooh, ooh. I'm on the wrong side of this it closed below me 
right there. The moment it opens up, taps out, fail safe. You're safe. Whew, I was I picked the wrong direction there. Okay, now I can get short. As soon as it gets back into that range right there, I'm going to go short. Uh, it doesn't give it to me. Oh, well, I'll wait for another setup. Setup, body breaks into it, comes back inside it right here. Off you go, inside that range, 50%, 62%, and start scaling out inside that small little range there. Doesn't matter if you're on the, if you, you're even going to make money if you're on the wrong side of this. If you know the little range, if you're aiming for up here, you're going to get your ass handed to you because you, you're not trading inside the range you should be trading in. So even with gold, it works. And if you did that over the course of, you know, waiting for those perfect entries, you might be waiting weeks or even months for your perfect entry. And if you know seasonal tendencies on gold and you're anticipating an October low, looking for a seasonal tendency for October's low to hit, wait for your entrance right there. As soon as you trade above it, you could just say, I'm going long. I know the seasonal tendency for October, gold makes a low. Maybe that, that you saw all you're looking for is set up just to start buying gold for the rest of the year, into the new year. So you can use just that setup alone as an investment tool. As soon as I see that that time of year, if you're using seasonal tenancies, you can, so you can see how all this, Michael's knowledge is overlapping. You can start using this stuff in multiple different ways to to boost your your style. Ah, so I think that pretty much, uh, unless somebody else wants me to point something out, I think I've made it pretty clear on how to trade the fail safe. Anybody got any questions? Anybody feel like they uh, need any more clarification on that? And you understand how we use it in uh, CAM models? Wherever your CAM entry is, 50%, if it's 50% of this consolidation is a CAM2 model, if you trade below 50% of that, you trade back into it, that's your fail safe. You use your line in the sand as your fail safe. If that breaker becomes your line in the sand if you trade above it and back into it you're out there it's a fail safe your stop loss is up here that's what your broker sees but you guys are managing it right here where your broker can't see he can't take a run on you because you're out before he even thinks about taking a run on you that's my ghost one i put that out there so the broker can see it and he thinks oh i gotta run that up there the moment he tips his hand and the algorithm starts to show that it's going to run there I'll see it long before he takes me out. And as soon as I get in there, and if you're right at the premium portion of that, you get a break even. If you're on the bottom end of it, you'll take a small loss, but you won't get a full hit unless they rip right through you. And that doesn't happen very often. And hopefully you've got yourself a new tool to protect your assets. So I hope I've accomplished my uh, objective this morning, showing you guys that it's not just a stop loss. Your stop loss has a whole new meaning now. Stop loss is the ugh, I do a maximum loss I'm willing to take on this trade. I won't take that. I've got a fail safe that will tell me I know when price is going to turn. I know when the algo is going to make a turn long before it takes my stop loss. And that's the fail safe. The fail safe is also the point where the algo turns and says, I'm turning against you. I'll give you one little opportunity to get out and then I'll you can hop back on on the next direction or I'll catch you when the bus comes back for your direction. So I hope you got that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, Jeff Garland, good morning. Uh, I'm, in a new, I'm a new viewer. Oh, good. Welcome, Jeff. I hope you got this. And the question I have is, does this technique work on other industries such as DAX Nickel? Ooh, let's do it. Real quick here. Let's do it on another indice. You say, hey, what other indices can we go on? Let's go on. Mm -hmm. I like your question. You see how excited I am? It's because I know it works on every damn thing. Uh, let's get, uh, what's this? Russell. Russell, would you want to, you said you wanted Nikki or something, right? Uh, Let's do the nifty, nifty index. 
Asia. Let's do the Nifty 50. We're doing the Nifty 50. I'll just show you. It works on DAX, Nickel. It'll work on anything. Because it's the algorithm. I'm not giving you anything fancy or crazy. It's the algorithm. If it literally, if you have a theory about how you think you can trade something, my question to you is, if you cannot reproduce it on every time frame, that's why moving averages are bullshit as far as I'm concerned. If you can't reproduce that same thing on every time frame, in every asset class, in any market that has a candle producing algorithm in it, then it's bullshit. It doesn't work. If this theory that I'm giving you now, this fail safe, works in every asset class and every time frame in anything that has a candle producing in it, does it give does it lend itself to some validity to you? Only you can answer that. Only you can answer that. Okay, so here's your swing point. Here's you got the consolidation here. We have a swing below this low. We have a consolidation right here. And I'm just picking up some random place back in April here on a daily chart, by the way. Not just some. Uh... So we've caught this guy here. I think that's it. Where... Yeah. So we break above it, come back to it, and go long. I think that might be just shy of it there. So if you say, well, okay, I'll take this one then. If I don't get that one, I'll get that one. Again, if it's a seasonal tendency for Nifty to turn at that time of year, then take it. As soon as you see that break above that high, you go, I'm in. I'm loading in for the rest of the week or the rest of the year until uh, September, October's swing point. That's seasonal tendencies in macro, the mega trades Michael talks about. Here's how you can use the daily chart like a minute chart to get a mega trade for months. Breaks above your high right there. Pops back into it right here. There's your gap. Also a breaker. You run above inside the breaker. You stay inside the breaker, inside the, the gap as well. Inside a seasonal tendency for a run back up for the rest of the year. You're in. So does it work? Hells yeah. Let's do it on the other side. Let's do it right over here. There's your swing point right there. Body trades below it right here. Da, 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 da. Bink. Perfect entry. Zero drawdown. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days later, you are down a thousand, a thousand handles in eight days. Your objective, what's your objective? Pull your fib tool from here to here because you're inside that range. Once you, you start to load on here, <clears throat> you load on right there. You can't pull this fib tool because you're not in that range anymore. You're in this range. Again, in a premium portion, you've loaded on with precision right there and you're starting to unload. You're looking at this. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the breaker that supports the run back up and look at that right to the breaker right to that high if that's where you cash out you cash out right there you literally one two three four five days later in that trade week you've already traded there's 300 all the way there from 800 there's 500 handles in your trade week 500 handles i don't know about you guys but that's that's an awesome and we just did that on a daily and that's in the nifty 50 in india here's another swing point look at that beautiful little pop above right there load on da, 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 all the way onto there stop losses sitting here and you just caught massive run here's another swing point you catch it right there body trades above comes back inside you collect it stop loss goes here october's low hmm is there something about the october low even on a nifty 50 is there something going on there folks and you catch it for the rest of the year. Oh, look right up to December 22nd. And then we look for a reversal and you go, oh, is this legal? Am I allowed to catch this in October's low? Am I allowed to see this reversal pattern and buy in and get out of my stocks? You literally buy October to <clears throat> the end of the year. <clears throat> and then you start your new year with, a, oh, I guess I'm going to collect this all the way back down again. Oh, I'm going to do this on the way back up. 
in April. Oh, am I going to do this again in the July, August low? July, August, September's high, down into October's low. <laughs> and then reversal. Oh, look back into December. Check your seasonal tendencies, my friends. Apply this to seasonal tendencies on a daily chart. Does this work? Jeff. I think we've got Jeff as a new subscriber, don't you think? Do you think we've hooked Jeff? Do you think he's interested? Does he see some logic in the methods of our madness? Um, good day, everyone. Luis, let's give Darren some thumbs up. Lambo, I love you, buddy. Uh, for giving us this valuable time and knowledge. All clear, but need to re to rewatch a couple of times on the video. All right. If there's any questions, uh, Master Trading, Albert. I know Albert's uh, volume or his microphone has got short, but Paul, thanks so much for all your input today. Uh, I, I appreciate it. When you pop in live, you get to have a little chat with me. I, I enjoy hearing people's voices. Look at this swing. Wait for that setup to happen. There's the body. We find a close above it. We come back inside it here. And you catch that massive run up. That's like $80 to 80. Oh, that's not massive. That's a one minute chart. But anyway, $80.66 to $80.99. And you just wait for that reversal to happen. It's <laughs> so much fun. So much fun. Bitcoin, what's Bitcoin doing? So it's still giving us some. Oh, <laughs> how lovely is that? Reversal. Right there, you see that? Reverse, come back up inside the order block, inside the range you're in. We have another, this is a little swing point, not a great one, but if that's your stop loss, look for the fair value gap. See that's still open down there? The fact that you're uh, you're getting a body go through this right now, think about your fail safe working right here, right now. Practice your fail safe right there on that. Just verbalizing it. See how the body closed right on it? So it's good, it's still safe. I would take my stop loss right now and I go, I'd slam it up against there because I wouldn't want to see it break that again. And you're just aiming for that first piece right there. You're inside that range. So take that piece there. And if you get more, look at the mean threshold. If you get the next one, take the next one. But your stop loss is zero stress trade right now. If it comes back against you because you see this piece right here, wait. That fail safe has saved you. Stop loss there because that's the mean threshold. You don't want to see that get taken one more time. Right there. Now you're out. It's going to come down some more. We've got one going high. we got one going low. The body's trade below it right here. This one's going short. We've already taken out that high. So you say that one is the short one. This one is the long one. And the long one has already taken out the high. So you got this one for a short. So now we're looking for a short. If we can get back into a discount or a premium already at short, Stop loss goes there. Watch. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'll be right back. that's it for me folks I'm out of here now that's been uh, I think we had two hours is a long time hopefully you guys got that got some knowledge out of that and um, I appreciate you guys all spending your time with me this morning and hopefully you understand a little bit more about the failsafe and its dynamicness and how you guys can use it 
tune in on Mondays and we'll be more than happy to uh, continue to apply this for you guys. One, one minute chart. You understand it here, you'll understand any chart, any asset class, any market you're in, you'll understand it's super clean. Study your one minute chart and you will dominate. You will dominate. Your stress levels will drop dramatically. The fail safe will save you so much stress. So much stress. And that is my gift to you all. So thank you so much again for tuning in. I love you guys so much. And Paul and Albert and Mastered Training. Derek, thanks you guys for popping in to the live session this morning. And I will see you guys bright and early on Monday, tomorrow morning. Thanks again. All the best.